if it looks like this box is too big for what came in it, so that's because half the stuff I had to take out. For reasons I can't say right now, I am saving them for another video, but to make up for it, here is an extra cube. This cube is the X-Man Tornado V3M, and I wasn't allowed to show you this in my last unboxing, but no one gave me the memo when I was suddenly allowed to, and now everyone's talking about it, so here we go. I'm late as always. Let's get some turns on this thing. It is super satisfying. I really wanted to show you guys last time, but I I guess now you're seeing it. What if I just did the whole video with this in the background? Let's get rid of it. When I saw everyone else make their videos about the X-Men Tornado V3, I couldn't do anything about that because I had a terrible headache that was just here for a week. Luckily, I'm good now. I couldn't even practice cubing and I had to miss a competition because of it. So I am way out of practice and I thought what would be really fun is to do a solve and see how bad I am now. It is so easy to get rusty at cubing. The story is I only had one J-perm mat and I gave it away to Michelle Carre. I didn't know I only had one. So here is another one. I think that this design looks a little bit better, but you guys let me know. So this is going to be my very first solve after over a week of not being able to practice and let's see how it goes. Here if I do U prime, then blue, orange, green, and then the red green pair is gonna set itself up and I can do a move cancellation to take it out. Oh no, I already messed up. Okay, um, look ahead, advanced pairing. Oh my, this is working. That didn't feel so bad, but it was 11 seconds. I bet if I watched it back, I wouldn't like it. I think that the Tornado V3 is actually really good. It turns super fast and the corner cutting, okay, the corner cutting is not as good as I'm hoping for. 45 degrees, that is kind of tough. Uh, if we go more than 45 degrees, it doesn't really do it. And if we go for reverse corner cutting this much, it can do it a little more. This is about the limit I expect. It can do it, that's good. The issue with the Tornado V2 was the corner cutting wasn't so great. Now this one doesn't feel amazing in solves, but it does feel good enough. And I do know how to kind of adapt to different turning styles depending on the cube. This one you have to turn more accurately. So I'm more about finishing my turns than trying to be fluid here, which is not natural to me. I like the really forgiving flexible cubes. And the upside to this cube is it turns really fast. And one thing that's cool about this, it, oh, I misrecognized. <laughs> So I think that for the feel that this cube is trying to achieve, which is very fast with strong magnets and quite stable at the same time, it's actually doing a really good job. Also, the colors are all really nice and it is a pretty quiet cube relative to the other cubes. Also, this cube is super adjustable, which is great. We have the magnet settings here. It goes from the minus, which is weakest magnets, to plus, which is strongest magnets, and mine is currently pointed at the plus. Then in the core, oh, I love this. There are two numbers here, and these can be adjusted separately. One is for the screw depth, and the other one is for the spring tension. If you wanna know what these mean, go check out that video there. I'm not gonna explain it every single time. This part's a little annoying, probably easier with a screwdriver, but you can take this little handle up, and then you can adjust it right from here uh, without having to have a special tool for it, and you can just turn. We are on setting three inside the circle, but outside the circle, we are on setting five. And how to know that is from the little hole right here. That gap is not on this side, but it is here as well. They both point at five. And you can turn clockwise to change the outside number, that's one now. And you can turn counterclockwise to change the inside number, that's now four. Now, the only thing I'm worried about with this is it's quite thin plastic and just be careful not to break it as you turn. Don't turn it too often. Anyway, love this system, but the settings out of the box, three on the inside, five on the outside, are already great for me. The Tornado V3 is actually a good cube, so let's do it some justice here. Okay, inspected first two pairs, lucky scramble, but that is what I need here. Uh... Okay, whatever. I made so many wrong decisions, let's not talk about it. What could this be? Of course, every year Speed Cube Shop has a Halloween cube and I always love these things. They are so cute. There's a different ghost every time. Oh my goodness, the centerpiece is just three little dots for the face. That is adorable. Actually interesting that the outside is white and not the ghost is white because that could make for two very different solving experiences because 
these stickers just would be gone completely. All right, let's see what else we got here. Nice colors, ooh, blue and black. These are a little similar, but I think they should be fine. Yeah, they're not the most similar colors I've had to deal with, that's for sure. And as always, this cube is glow in the dark, so I can't show it right now. I can't just turn off all the lights. How glow in the dark stuff works is it needs to kind of charge by being near a light source for a while, and then it will glow in the dark. So later I'll put it next to a light and show you what it looks like. I think a few seconds in the sun is enough. Oh yeah. This cube is a little better than I thought, but we are gonna need to fix that. And by fix that, I mean make it even better. We have jack-o'-lantern lube, and it has a child-proof cap. All right, kids, look away. This is adult content. YouTube's algorithm is so smart that I wonder if just saying that will get my video some sort of demonetized, but there's only one way to find out, and that's by risking it. One, two, three, four, five, six. This smells like pumpkin spice latte, which is to say that it doesn't smell like pumpkin and smells like whatever is in pumpkin spice latte, probably cinnamon. Let's get this thing scrambled. And now my entire cube smells like it and my hands smell like it too. Oh, that's still so cute. Oh wow, this is a lot of setup. We're also gonna need the mat. Oh, it's a cute little cat. The cat in the hat on a mat. As always, I get one solve to determine if I am really in the Halloween spirit, and I didn't get a good look at the ghost at the start, so I'm just gonna have to improvise what that side looks like. That is hilarious. So clearly this doesn't go at the top of the ghost, it must be on the other side. And so if this is on the bottom, yellow on the bottom, that means I'm gonna need this one twisted the other way and then fix it. So that's pretty much the only detail you have to worry about with cubes that have orientable centers. Um, everything else is pretty much normal besides being a weird color scheme. So I'm barely gonna inspect. Let's just see if it works itself out. So uh, there's the cross. I'm just gonna hope now that it was right. And here's the rest of the pairs. Ooh, I can't recognize. Okay. I, what is this? That is an OLL, I didn't, I, I didn't do OLL, okay. There we go. Not a plus two. Oh, that, no. Let's get you all fixed up. But we'll have to do another solve because that was a DNF. Okay. This is going well, except now I can't see anything, what? OLL and then PLL, but we're not done because I didn't orient the center. Okay, it goes this way, take it out, different center. Now we're done, I think. Yes, we got it and that is a sub 20. Let's put the cube on its nice spooky little stand. Uh, like that. And there are also really cute bags. We got the Grim Reaper, Speed Cube Shop, Skeleton, and the Cat. You guys vote in the comments which one you want me to put it in. Just kidding, this is not a democracy. We are putting it in the cat bag and it will rest in peace right there. Adorable. Next up, we have a square zero. Let's see what is in here. Wow. Somehow I was not expecting that. Every piece looks the same. I kind of learned from experience, square one has different types of pieces, so it does some crazy stuff. And square two, spoiler alert, is easier because the pieces are all the same size. So square zero, hey, you guys get two videos in one right here. I'm gonna scramble it and confidently solve it right away because I'm pretty sure this is going to be extremely easy. Attempting to solve square zero with no help, okay. Let's see it. So we're going to take, oh, come on. This is barely scrambled, but okay, let's let's do it. Uh, we're gonna take this one that's not correct with the other whites and pair it with this white and that kicks these two. Okay, come on, that's a, that's a three move solve. Okay, well, this thing is flipped, but we can just repeat our two U2s and flip it. Okay, that's it. Clearly my moves are not that random. How many moves can you even do on this thing? Let me try to only turn one layer at once. Maybe that'll be a little bit more random. Are you kidding me? I'm almost, okay, I'm almost in the same situation as I was last time, but it is not the same because now uh, yellow's mostly solved. Uh, let's just try to solve yellow. 
And what do you know, white is solved. Clearly, I can solve this thing. So, oh, just kidding, that is a J perm. Moving on, this one I am personally excited for. It is a seven by seven. I don't know if a lot of you guys actually do seven by seven. There is no reason why the WCA needs seven by seven because six by six is complex enough. Oh wow, the size of this is great. Uh, I heard this is a good cube. It is quite expensive though, but uh, maybe it could be the best seven by seven. Okay, let's give this a shot. This is the Aofu Worm seven by seven. Oh wow. Outer layers turn pretty good so far. I haven't even tried turning a different layer. Let me turn these. Mmm. So far, I'm definitely liking the size. It might be an out of the box thing. It's kind of hard to control, or it, it could also be a I haven't practiced in a long time thing. I'm gonna have to do a lot more solves on this thing. I'm really excited for it, just mainly because of the size and it's already not bad. For comparison, the best seven x seven, the MGC is that big. It is a pretty major difference, and if it doesn't look that way, it's just the difference of having to extend your finger a little bit further on every single turn, which adds up to a lot of turns, obviously, over the course of a 7x7 solve, which for me is three minutes, and three minutes of extra extending of my fingers is really appreciated to not be there if this 7x7 is any good. But as always, let's try the parity algorithm just to get a rough idea of if this cube is good or not. Okay. A few lockups, maybe the cube is loose, uh, maybe the cube is tight. I'm gonna have to practice on this a bit and let you guys know what I think in the future. I also got two Diane Tangians. Actually, I got three. I unboxed this one earlier because I thought I was gonna need it for a competition, but then couldn't go to the competition. Ugh. I really like the Diane Tangian partially because it's quiet and partially because it's flexible. I use it for blindfolded as my main because you have to do a bunch of crazier finger tricks and like M moves and S moves and E moves. I really like the fact that it's flexible for blindfolded because it makes some of the hard algorithms a little bit easier. Was that an alg? And my old Tangian, I'd actually been using it for so long that it broke. It actually broke in a really funny way, which I wanna show you. So I can still use this thing and it actually feels kind of good to use, but it is technically broken. So I've unscrewed the top and that is always so satisfying. Oh, that is disgusting. I remember trying to clean this and I couldn't do it. But basically pay attention to the fact that right in there where the screw sits in, there's a cylinder that hugs it. Here is the orange center. That little cylindrical part just isn't there. So I can take the screw inside and just move it all around because there's nothing in there. Actually, when those little cylinders came out, um, I threw some in the trash thinking, oh, there's nothing I can do about this. But then I realized I could just put it back in, but then I couldn't find them in the trash anymore. So they're just gone. It doesn't make a big difference, but it does affect how far the screw has to go, which I think affects the mechanics of the cube when you're turning it, not by much. The cube still works, but it's just so funny that these things can break because it's something I've never thought about. Anyway, just in case I got an extra Tangian and I got more Tangians because I know I'm gonna want this cube forever. I really like it for blind. Maybe not for blind forever, but one of the great things about it is it is tied for quietest cube and that is just so great. Also, it's my mom's favorite cube, so if I'm done with it, I can just give it to her. We have the GAN251 version two. Now, let me just tell you something. I am 50-50 on this. I think GAN251 version 2 is not a new cube. Why do I feel like I've seen this name before? GAN's naming system is so messed up, that's why I wish they just, I don't know, made different colored internals or something for every single cube. Okay, 51 millimeters, I don't know. I think that's a little bit big. Jeez, it is incredibly loose feeling. What are these weird catches that can cubes do sometimes? Ugh, their three by threes are actually so good, but not because it's perfect. It's just because they're good in one way and they catch as well. But their two by twos, I mean, you gotta get them perfect. Come on, like this, this feels really strange. I'm gonna do one two by two solve to determine if this cube is good. There are no blocks. Can I get a re-scramble, please? That doesn't look like a legal scramble. Okay, this is manageable. Okay, can I get a one look going? Ready, set, go. I don't know what the timer is. I, I actually can't turn on this. That is messed up. 
There are no magnets. Oh, why do they keep releasing their cubes without magnets? Do people buy these? Do people get tricked by these? Come on, Gen, I don't understand. Is that why this cube is bad? I waste my time. We have a four x four. This is the Diane Chang S4M. Sorry for judging, but Diane Chang cubes usually aren't that great. Uh, so I'm going to try it out, but I don't have high hopes for it. And as always, when I say something like that, I really hope that I'm wrong. Okay, let's give this a quick first impression. Ooh, the outer layers actually feel pretty good if you turn accurately, but the inner layers uh, seemed a little tight when I was turning the outer layers. Whoa, come on, turn faster. This is really weird. Wait, why do I feel like I have never felt inner layers like this, but that is not a good thing. Jeez. See, when I'm turning partially in the outer layers though, the outer layers are actually really good. This reminds me a little bit of the GAN 460, where it was really great outer layers, but really bad inner layers. This is kind of the same thing. I think this is honestly better than a GAN 460, but it has the same vibe. One thing I'll give to Dian Cheng though, is that their cubes always look really nice. They have this nice little pattern going on the black side of the internals. And I feel like GAN did that sort of thing first and I loved it. This does feel really smooth like a GAN cube too. That might be why. Uh, it's just that the performance is not that great. Monster Go EDU. I do not even know what this is about. I don't know why this cube exists. I just know that GAN made Monster Go and they had some nice puzzles, but just the 3x3s are always kind of okay. I heard this one was like really good somehow. Um, oh, no. It doesn't feel at all like a GAN cube. It kind of, kind of feels like a Chi cube. Really loud too. So it is magnetic. It also feels really loose and flexible. You know what? I think what's going on here is, yeah, it doesn't feel like any part of this is particularly that good. Oh, the corner cutting's not bad. Yeah, um, it just feels like it's super flexible and all of its qualities work well together. And honestly, that's what you need in a cube. Like if you just throw a bunch of random stuff together, it doesn't tend to work out, but every once in a while you get a really nice feeling cube like this when all of the qualities just feel like they mesh together perfectly. A little too flexible and all over the place for me though. I can see some people liking this if you can control it. Let me turn a little bit looser. Okay, see this is kind of the issue. If I don't turn hard enough, I feel like sometimes it does get into one of those little snappy moments and it like it just overturns for me or uh, like it's just doing something that has a very variable force and I'm not used to that. Um, I've said a lot before in reviews that that's something I don't like. It's definitely true for this cube so I can't say this is gonna be my main or anything but I would adjust the settings if I could. I'm just not expecting anything like that because it's not Gan's flagship series. Okay, yeah, it's just normal, nothing on the magnets. It's a good cube. If you try it and like it, I think you can get it and main it. It's pretty good, but I would not just get this if you don't know what to get because it is really unique in its qualities uh, and you could like it, but I don't think everyone will like this. And finally, uh, mm, hope you can read Chinese. Just kidding, it is the Weilong Skube Maglev. Oh, that looks so cool. Honestly, I love this purple theme that Moyu has been going for with all their new flagships. Of course, Skubes would do that weird thing as I take them out. I like that I can see a lot of the purple on this though. Ooh, that feels really nice. I bet this is a good Skube. That's all I can say about Skube. So as always, let's just start with the white side. I think this is a bad case because I've inspected absolutely nothing. Okay, let's figure this out. There's a few pieces. There we go. Uh, twist this one clockwise. Do this little alg that I somehow still remember counterclockwise. There's the corners. Um, centers. This is always the hardest part for me because I'm still using the method that I came up with right at the start. And I, I'm sure this is easy. I do not know how to do this. I'm pretty sure I messed up the previous step, but let's get two solved and then these two swap, these two swap, which is like, which is like that. Oh, that was not good. Whatever, I don't care. It only feels a little bad. 
So, me solving a square zero with no help, did you enjoy it? Did you even remember it? Well, here are some more videos just like that if you want to see me actually attempt challenging puzzles.